Texans. We are better than this. Abortion rights have been stripped from us. It's imperative that we come out here and uh, remind folks what's on the ballot. Abortion is women. Abortion really determines for me who I'm going to vote for. I want to vote for life first. This election is hugely significant when it comes to abortion. We sit here in October 2022, just a couple months after the U.S. Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. Texas uh, has banned all abortions except to save the life of the pregnant person, outlawing the procedure and shutting down abortion clinics statewide. This election is the first chance they will have to go to the polls and sort of vote based on this outrage that many people feel in Texas. When voters in Texas cast their votes this fall, they will not be voting on like an up and down yes, no question on abortion. What is on the ballot this fall are a lot of names of individuals who are running for a chance to influence policy around abortion in different ways. Things feel like they're changing very quickly around abortion access in Texas. But if you talk to people who were involved in the advocacy to get to this point, it's the work of 50 years of advocacy. Everything and I thank you, legislators, for all the work that you have done to support that bill. For all of us. When the legislature gavels in in January, the question that will be determined by this election will not be whether or not you can get an abortion in Texas. The question that will be answered will be how much resistance will Republicans face in trying to advance an agenda that is going to try to further limit access to abortion. They've closed the clinics already, so now the question is, you know, will you be able to travel out of state to get an abortion? You know, will you be able to access Plan B, for example, an emergency contraception? What are the sort of the next frontiers and how much resistance will they face from Democrats and some moderate Republicans? When voters go to the polls this fall, they will be voting on sort of two general categories of elected officials that play a role in abortion policy. And the first is the people who make the laws. Basically anyone who's working in the state house, in the legislature, in Austin. Also a role like the lieutenant governor. Those are the people who have a ton of sway over what policies get passed. So the other piece of this is the governor. He cannot, you know, mandate the clinics open tomorrow. Uh, what he can do is veto laws that he does not agree with, but that role does not, you know, directly create policy. Besides, you know, some limited executive action power. A major role that a Democratic governor with a Republican legislature can play is just sort of creating a logjam. If your goal is sort of to stop legislation, that can be a very powerful role. So the other piece of this is, you know, once those laws are passed and on the books is, you know, who will be responsible for enforcing them? And that's another set of elected offices. So in individual jurisdictions, you may have a chance to vote for your prosecutor, your local DAs, as well as you know local city council people and things like that. On the statewide level, the big one is the attorney general. Under the trigger law that went into effect after the overturn of Roe v. Wade, the attorney general is involved in bringing a civil case against anyone who performs an abortion against the law. But you know, the attorney general would have a lot of sort of um, discretion on how to handle those sorts of cases. You know, I think a big lesson for this election and for every election is taking the time to sort of educate yourself not just on who's running, but what power they have over your everyday life. While you might hear the most from and about, you know, the big names at the top of the ticket, the roles lower down on your ballot play such a huge role in deciding the policies that you as an individual have to live under every single day.